There are certain foods and beverages that every time you eat them, they lead to a small but measured increase in inflammation in the body. Now, in traditional Chinese medicine, inflammation relates to several different organ functions in the body. But in general, what if you knew exactly what was increasing inflammation in the body, leading to a worsening of your chronic symptoms, and what was actually improving inflammation in your body, leading to an improvement in those symptoms? Now in this video, I wanna share a bit about what some of these qualities and foods are that relate to inflammation in the body, as well as herbs, lifestyle practices, and even how traditional Chinese medicine views inflammation and what you can do about it. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hine, board licensed acupuncturist and doctor of traditional Chinese medicine and author of the health book, Master of the Day. So let's get it. So I had a patient once come in and he said, I've been having this really weird series of symptoms that's been bothering me lately and I've never really had them my entire life. He said, you know, I've always been someone who's eaten very healthy through my life for the last five or 10 years and I've never really had problems with my sinuses. But he's like, I just can't figure out why I'm lately having so many runny noses in the morning, why I have to blow my nose, and even why for the first time I'm getting sinus infections. And I just asked him, I said, well, what was the one thing you've been doing differently over the last three months or so? And he said, actually, you know, the main thing is I've just been eating very differently. I've been eating out a lot because I've just been very stressed and I've been feeling pretty unhappy after my divorce and I've just wanted to not be at home basically and be lonely. So I've been going out and having, you know, sometimes a glass or two of wine, and even just like a burger and fries sometimes, stuff that I never would have eaten before. And it led to this great discussion about what increases inflammation in the body and how could his sinuses be a canary in the coal mine for inflammation showing up, for example, in his digestive system. Now this particular patient, he actually didn't want to take any traditional Chinese medicine formulas. So all we did was the acupuncture and had him work on a few dietary principles that would constitute a cooling diet in traditional Chinese medicine, one that typically improves inflammation and sinus issues. Over the next six weeks, he said, what's amazing is all we've done is really the dietary therapy and the acupuncture and my severe sinus issues that came on out of nowhere, I haven't had them in the last three weeks. So what did we do? What is the relation of inflammation with your sinus issues or other issues in the body? And what can we actually talk about in terms of actionable strategies? So let's take sinusitis, for example. One of the most common issues that I see day to day in my practice. Check out this one research paper called Chronic Sinusitis and the researchers clearly noted early on chronic sinusitis is chronic inflammation of the sinus or nasal passages occurring for more than 12 weeks at a time here. Now I'll add one further thing. People who have chronic sinus issues one location of inflammation it can be anywhere in the body very commonly have issues in other parts of the body and it often comes from my digestive root cause. You should also check out the free guide I've put together below this video. It's a free quiz to figure out which organ is the root cause of your symptoms. And we're talking about inflammation, so you'd probably want to know which organ is the root cause of inflammation for your specific symptoms. So check it out, we'll jump in a little bit more here. So what is the traditional Chinese medicine point of view? You know, when we talk about varying kinds of inflammation, sinusitis, even issues with the stomach, right? Basically chronic gastritis, or even chronic reflux that morphs into something more severe over time. Issues in the intestines, issues with the gallbladder, right? The digestive system is one of the areas you see the most common issues with inflammation going on. So what is the TCM point of view? Because these issues have existed since the dawn of time. Most often, but not always, it involves issues that TCM calls heat or damp heat. For example, let's take an issue, gout. Inflammation of the big toe, the joint there, you very commonly see is almost entirely dietarily related. So take a look at this one research paper here. This one famous physician documented in this paper called Advances in Experimental and Clinical Research of the Gouty Arthritis Treatment talks about famous doctor called Zhu Danxi. He was one of the four masters of the schools of the Jinyuan dynasty. He basically proposed the name of gout. Now he has a book called Danxi's Mastery of Medicine Gout. He pointed out that the pathogenesis of gout is what he called phlegm, wind heat, wind damp, blood deficiency, blood heat, and blood stasis which are blocked in the meridians and in the collaterals. So what does all this esoteric <laughs> medical knowledge actually mean? When we talk about gout, right? Gout is caused by the depositing of uric acid in the joints there. It's a sort of unique form of arthritis. And the number one correlation is people eat a terrible standard American diet. Foods that are high in sugar, inflammation, and foods that generate what we call damp heat. Damp heat is also issues that are bacterial or fungal in nature. So when we talk about gout, we're talking about just one kind of inflammation in the body. It can also be, like we said, acid reflux or GERD, chronic sinusitis, pancreatitis, varying kinds of inflammation in the intestines, right? There's all kinds of different issues you can have that are intestinal disorders. These issues involve what we call heat or damp heat. And a way you can conceptualize it is, let's just take gallbladder issues because they are one of the most common issues I see. When you, let's say, take someone who's over 
overeating every single day. They're eating standard American diet, high calorie fried food. What this fried food is doing, basically we're talking about, is let's say you have a giant meal. Your body has to secrete all kinds of enzymes and this soup of chemical compounds that help break down that food. But when you dump in a giant meal into a stomach where the fire is not strong enough to cook it, you're basically leading to a kind of stagnation, for lack of a better word. And that localized stagnation produces a kind of festering. And very commonly, when people who are heavy eaters and binge eaters, they come in in their early 30s, suddenly they're having gallbladder attacks. They're getting that twinge in the right upper quadrant of their under the rib cage that are in the rib cage, or they're actually getting full-blown attacks maybe getting sourness in the mouth. One of the great ancient doctors of Chinese medicine called this, you know, when you're eating food, it's like you're replenishing qi, you're replenishing resources. And he said, an excess of qi is heat. Have you ever had the experience of overeating and then you really quickly get that, that hot sensation in your mouth with some acidity in the stomach? It feels like heat, right? Some people come in and they tell me, you know, I feel burning or heat sensations in my intestines, sometimes after eating the wrong foods or a heavy meal. So this is an example of, in my opinion, this inflammation that's building in the body. From a dietary principle, the way you can think about inflammation is basically cooling foods versus warming foods. Now this is what we call the flavor and nature of foods, right? This is the same kind of principle that relates to the traditional herbal medicine. But herbal medicine also has certain herbs have a certain affinity for certain organs or symptoms as well. And when we talk about heating and warming and cooling foods, a clear example would be if you're eating celery or cucumbers, cucumbers are very cooling. You don't typically want to eat a raw cucumber salad on a winter day, but ginger tea feels really good. And when it's 100 degrees out, you don't want to drink ginger tea. You want to drink, let's say, watermelon juice or celery juice. So cooling versus warming foods are also loosely correlated with inflammation. My patients that come in with severe acid reflux, I have to let them know foods that generate too much heat and inflammation, coffee, alcohol, large meals, fried foods and heavily, I don't want to say always spicy foods increase inflammation because a lot can benefit it, but let's say heavy and fried foods. Those three things, heavy coffee drinkers, heavy alcohol drinkers, smokers, and people who eat lots of heavy and fried food will exacerbate acid reflux and all those other issues I talked about. So these warming foods can exacerbate that heat in the body. So what can you do about it? Right? If you never come to see me in my practice, what can you actually do about it? Let's talk about your life and lifestyle first. There is really clear data and research on how Qigong, meditation, and physical exercise decrease inflammation in the body. That's a tale as old as time. Physical exercise has so many benefits from blood sugar regulation to blood pressure regulation to mood to sleep to insulin sensitivity and also on inflammation. So a physical workout routine four days a week for an hour really improves inflammation in the body. The second one is eating more of a cooling diet. If you think about the antidote to the standard American diet that we talked about, you should check out some of my resources on what's a cooling versus a warming diet because it has a really rough overview of what foods to eat. From a general rundown, in general, cooling foods are vegetables. And in general, I encourage my patients to only primarily eat cooked sauteed vegetables and olive oil. Some kinds of grains can be on more on the neutral or cooling side, right? I would say meat, animal protein is more on the warming side. Spices, if they're pungent, like pepper, garlic, cloves, obviously on the warming side. In terms of liquids, green tea, cooling, black tea, darker teas, warming. In terms of what people drink, typically sodas, overall warming, and they generate a lot of dampness, as we say, so they harm the spleen, stomach, pancreas. Coffee, alcohol, very, very warming. Those two are some of the biggest offenders if people consume them excessively on a daily basis. Now, what about when it comes to herbal formulas? So I commonly treat all of these issues that I just mentioned, and some of the formulas that are most famous for treating inflammation in the body are, for example, a formula called Ban Chia Xie Shen Tang. Ban Chia Xie Shen Tang is a formula commonly used when I see someone come in with upper GI issues as well as chronic sinusitis. This formula is a godsend, and it's the very, very bitter herbs high in berberine, Huangqin, Scutellaria, and Huanglian, which is Coptis. Very, very bitter. They have this deep yellow color, super anti-inflammatory, antibacterial, antifungal. Another famous one for sinusitis this is called Guajir Jia Gugintang. This is another one you can use when people have both acute and chronic sinusitis, depending on the presentation. This formula has herbs like that medical grade cinnamon twig we talked about, improves circulation, regulates the nervous system. Very, very good for improving that microvascular flow, as well as herbs like Gugin, Kudzu, which are amazing for sinuses, you know, chronic runny noses and that sort of thing. So a bit of a longer video, but inflammation is one of the most common issues we see clinically. Certainly I do in my private practice and is related to a lot of the health issues, if not most of them that we see today. So this is an overview of practices you can do and, and maybe where it's coming from in terms of your situation. Again, if you guys wanna go further, don't forget, I see a limited number of new patients in my clinic 
every single month in Los Angeles or virtually via telemedicine. If you want to reach out, check the link in the bio here to reach out to my clinic or just go to dralexhining.com forward slash clinic. And before you go, there's another cause of inflammation we haven't talked about here that I covered in an extensive video. So check it out.